Right, good afternoon and welcome back to Thai Talk with Dan. Now today's story is happening right here and right now. This subscriber is currently here in Thailand. He's got a lot of problems going on and he's literally got no money in his pocket. Now I've been speaking to this subscriber via messenger and we had a few messages back and forth and then he wrote out his story and sent it to me. Now I'm just going to share some of the messages that he sent before I read out his story on the channel. So he started off with, hello Dan, I follow you on YouTube. I have a crazy story for you, but I must remain anonymous. I live here now, 49 and got a tropical disease and too sick to walk for a while. A Thai girl is taking care of me 24-7. Then he sends me, I am a former Christian minister, got a tropical disease and got very sick four years ago. Married 24 years, wife got bitchy after I got sick and broke and couldn't work and marriage began to fail. She kicked me out and ended up with local girls taking care of me. Asian girls take care of a man better than American women. I ended up with girls taking care of me before my divorce was finalised, so my church excommunicated me and declared me hellbound. <laughs> then he states he will be heading back to Bangkok in a few days once the rain settles down and his legs are okay to drive as we've had a little bit of rain here. I simply could not take care of myself and some local girls tended to me 24-7. Well, I got involved. They showered me and cleaned me and fed me by hand. I had an Indonesian girl and Thai girl fight over me. It got nasty. The Indonesian girl drugged my drink with K or Molly and got in my face when I tried to leave her. So I pushed her back and she dramatically fell on her butt and then took about 3,000 baht to pay the doctor bills for a scan of her back. So she says. Right, I'm going to stop the messages right there and we're going to jump straight into this subscriber's story. Now bear in mind, this subscriber is right here, right now, in this situation, here in Thailand. And this story also goes to show that there are a lot of guys, and we've shared it with previous stories, a lot of guys with either mental health problems or they're going through a messy divorce or there's been a death in the family or something has gone on and they've decided to escape to Thailand and then one thing leads to another, they start getting involved with the women and things can go sour pretty fast. So let's jump into today's Thailand story and see what this subscriber has going on. Right, buckle up guys, it's about to get bumpy. Hello Dan, I am a fallen Christian minister who is now addicted to Southeast Asian girls. <coughs> I recently watched your Thai tales from the perspective of a Thai woman with the alcoholic partner. There are many foreign men who have bad tales of Thai women, but on the whole, I think the Thai are usually the victims. There are many bad Thai women, but overall, I think it is foreign men who are the worst. I am 50 years old. I'm a foreign man and I am the villain of this story. And a Thai woman saved my life. So this is my Thai tale. For two decades, I did humanitarian work among the poor. I was married over two decades with children. I was considered a good person with a good reputation. I swore never to make a salary above the poverty line and we lived simply and used any extra cash to fund medical care for poor indigenous people. I lived strictly and never even looked seriously at another woman other than my wife. 
My wife was American and had the normal traits of an American woman. She got wrinkly and struggled with weight. She only did aerobics out of duty and very vanilla aerobics it was. Now my wife liked to nag me. She sometimes replied to me sarcastically which always made me very mad. My marriage was just okay and when it was not good I just became super busy and succeeded at my career and played with my kids. Go play! Then I almost died from multiple tropical illnesses. None of them were my fault. As my health declined, so did my marriage. I was unable to work outside the home for months. I was sick and largely bedbound. I noticed that my wife showed me contempt and disrespect when I was at my weakest and when she jokingly referred to me as a child or a man-child or a big baby because I was so sick. I began to hate her and call her names back when she joked like this. And she claimed I was abusive. A wife calling her husband a man baby or child is inexcusable when he is writhing in pain and rocking back and forth in distress. <laughs> And then I had surgeries and the meds made me hallucinate. Yes, hallucinate. I thought I developed schizophrenia. It was terrifying to see and hear things that were not real. My brain literally felt broken. So I began to drink heavily. My wife then kicked me out of the house. I was now sick and alone. So I let my local Asian female friends take care of me. You might be able to figure out where the story leads to next. My girlfriends cleaned and cooked for me and massaged me and fed me by hand during my worst days. At nights they would take me out drinking. This took away the shakes. In their minds, they could see my mood get happier when they took me to the club and even happier when they liked to play a bit with me and sit on my lap and dance for me and dance with me and feed me by hand. He seems to like that feeding by hand, Malaki. Now, because of the damage from the pills, my hands and legs would shake and have tremors. And so they would take me out for dinner and drinks at bars with music. Because of the music, people were moving and dancing and so my weird tremors did not get noticed. In this way, I would not feel shy about my bodily dysfunctions. Then they would all get drunk and sleep over. And despite my chronic pain, I was still very strong and would often have to carry a girl, sometimes two over my shoulders who had passed out back to my apartment to sleep it off. Soon, every night, I would have drunk girls, often seven or eight at a time, sleeping over and some found their way into my bed. One girl, let's call her Baby Doll, fell for me hard and we became intimate. Life is good, but it can be better. Now, my wife never complimented little Junior, but these were little Asian girls who had only had Asian boyfriends and so they made me feel young and alive and manly. Now, after I started sleeping with Baby Doll, she got obsessed and even had my name tattooed on her body in three places and one said, Property of John. Later I would discover these girls were secretly drugging my drinks with party drugs. Yes, it sounds crazy, but it really did happen. Now with all this going on, my bodily pain went away. They did a bad thing for me, but they did it for a good reason. 
They said it was because they saw me move better and it made me healthier. This also made me extra eager for aerobics. <laughs> Due to my mental issues and drug use, I developed a mania of sorts. I saw my career ending. I could not even get out of bed until 5 or 6 p.m. and then only because the girls would come and feed me and massage me and sometimes shower me and then they would take me out to drink and dance. I like to party! <laughs> Now it got that crazy that Baby Doll began to wake me up with a small glass of whiskey and pills each morning. I knew I had to change my life. I could literally feel that my liver was enlarged. The manic thoughts were gone because I was drunk or high all the time and very cute girls who giggled constantly and never talked about anything serious. They were the life of the party and would dance on the tables and acted crazy and fun. I had lived my life so straight laced and had married a good church girl who was such a boring, unpleasant woman. Now I partied every night and it was killing me. So I heard about marijuana becoming legal in Thailand and I read studies of it being useful to quit other types of addictions and it's true. So I moved to a different tourist city away from those other party girls and I began taking it for several weeks to quit all opioids and benzodiazepine meds and during that time only took Xanax two times. However, I was high on wacky backy and whiskey every night. But there I continued to party and meet girls. I could not stay away from these little Thai dolls. I never paid a bar fine or dated a bar girl. I never paid for any special services at any massage shop. I never used a creature of the night. But I met several girls and flirted and ended up partying with them. I like to meet massage girls because they are good with their hands and I was always in severe chronic pain if I was not drunk or high. And a massage with cannabis oil and pot brownies can make both parties very happy and very playful. <laughs> I also was with several of those coyote girls who danced on those loudspeakers and those girls can really move. Now, last January, I ended up getting three girls pregnant within one month and I barely remember any of it. Ah! Ah! Now, my physical state soon degraded further and I felt like I was dying. One of the girls Bunny, we will call her, because she can do it, like a rabbit, told me to come to her hometown. She even bought my tickets for me. There she slowly tapered me off all drugs and alcohol and made me healthy soups every day. Once when I was feeling very low, she grabbed me so that I could not jump off a building without also hurting her. She literally saved my life. Was Bunny a saint or an angel? No. She was very sexy and a KTV girl who ran a gambling table in the past. And then after she did that, she was a massage girl who sometimes did handies. Now Bunny wanted a long-term boyfriend and wanted to quit being objectified. She did jobs like modelling or massage because she was very pretty and had a curvy body, more so than most Thai girls. So I moved in with Bunny 
She took care of me 24-7 and even wiped my butt and bathed me when I am at my sickest. However emotionally, she is often like a child. On the positive, she will call me to bed and say, come hug me, daddy. But on bad days, she will pout or just simply throw things. She was very frugal with my money. I know it was foolish, but I was bedbound for a while and gave her all my money and ATM cards. She used it well and no money ever went missing, except for one time and she later gave me a surprise present and this explained the missing money. She wanted to get married and have a baby, but after I told her I needed to return to my home country, she hid my passport and then slapped me and threatened to kill herself if I leave her. Now the stress of this caused me to get sicker and so I dropped the plan to return to America and let Bunny take care of me further. Oh God, I love you. Mm. I felt like I was in captivity, but it was a pleasant captivity at that. She looks like one of the Frank Frazetta pin-up girls from the 70s and 80s, notably Princess Tigra for you nerds out there who might know. I was very sick and even too sick to communicate with family and friends, but when I got homesick and mentioned a desire to return to my home country again, she would get angry and become dramatic. She had invested in me so much. Now I had to marry her and give her my baby. And then the unbelievable happened and we discovered two tumours in her uterus. And how could I not help this woman who had saved my life? Ah uh, shit, here we go again. Now the cost of all the medical bills literally emptied all my savings out. And right now I have free USD to my name. My retirement is very small because I took a vow of poverty as a minister before my illness and divorce literally turned my life upside down. Now in the end, we got the tumours removed and she is now healing. But I am poor and jobless and feeling insane sometimes. My mental state is very bad, so I recently determined to plan once again to return to the West. But Bunny got so distraught, she slapped me again, but hit me in the eye and I reflexively pushed her backward into a shelf. Then, of course, she used this as leverage. If I still wanted to leave her, then she would take me to the police and file a report for abuse. And she did. She took me to the police. After that, while she was sleeping, I left her. And the party girls from the year previous sent me money for a hotel and some food. But Bunny found my hotel and came with massage oil and homemade food and wooed me once again and took good care of me and said nothing about the incident. It became like a honeymoon for us and we spent many pleasant days in that hotel. She asked if there was any way I would stay and I told her, why stay? We have no children. It is best that we part and now I just discovered she is taking vitamins for fertility and she is on top of me every day, many times. Again, I feel like I am held captive because some days when my pain is bad, I can barely even go to the 7-Eleven on my own and she is my 24-7 caretaker. So, please tell me, when considering my actions and the actions of this Thai girl, who 
as acted more noble. I used her for aerobics at first and then she helped me taper off all drugs when I was close to death and even kept me from joining the expat flying club. Now, many Thai women are very bad, but many are also very nurturing and caring. Even if they only finished elementary school and are afraid of ghosts and they throw temper tantrums when they are angry. Many Thai women, however, do make wonderful wives. And besides, in my hallucinations now, all I see is ghosts. I even left her once to go and play with my old girlfriends and she forgave all. The Phalang in Thailand are often human scum. The last lunch I had with a Phalang expat, he only talked about aerobics with bar girls, but God saved my life through this Thai girl and even if I return to the USA now, I will gladly send money to her. Not because I am a chump, but because this girl loved me and cared for me at my worst and made me better. She was my little nurse and I will always love her. I am writing this after a heavy session of aerobics with her and I still don't know where she hid my passport. Take two, take two. And I still don't know where she hid my passport. Now, I need to return to America and plug into the veteran system there since I was in the war and maybe they can help me now that I am so sick. But at 50 years old and sick and poor, what will happen to me alone in the USA? I cannot date girls in their 20s in America and Western women look so ugly compared to these little Asian dolls. But I cannot find work here. I could bring one of these girls to the USA, but can I marry a girl who occasionally gets mad, throws plates against the wall, or slaps me, or even calls the police when I pushed her off me because she was slapping me, and she has since withdrawn the report. However, the damage is done to my heart. Also, one time in a rage, she told me she'd kill me if I tried to leave her. This is not normal, so I am sad. And some days, I think I will die soon anyway. I feel trapped in paradise and kidnapped by my gorgeous captor. She has done more kindness to me in my illness than any other person in this world. And it seems from the heart, but hell hath no fury like a Thai woman scorned. Kind regards, John. Right guys, what do you make of that story? Please let us all know down in the comments. I have no idea what I'm about to say to you guys now, apart from that was the weirdest strangest, most worrying story I've probably read about a foreigner that's currently here in Thailand right now. Now he obviously needs to get off the booze and the pills and he's not going to do that unless he changes the environment that he's in and it can be very difficult if you're already addicted to stuff like that when you're currently here in Thailand in one of the party places, let's say. So my advice, John, would be get the hell back home to America as fast as you can, as soon as you are fit and able. At the end of the day, you broke up from your wife and that probably did hurt you. And then your leash was literally taken off and you jumped into the devil's playground, so to speak and things have spiralled out of control. So get yourself back home, mate. However, there's a lot of people here with a lot of experience, a lot of guys that are living here in Thailand. Let's see what they have to say to you. Maybe it's better advice than mine. However, John, please take care of yourself. 
Now guys, if you've got your own true to life Thailand story and you want to share it on the channel, then please get your email sent in to thaitalkwithdan at gmail.com. Thanks for watching guys. Take care of yourselves. Take it easy. Be careful with the substances, the alcohol, your health. Look after yourself guys and stay safe. Ciao for now. Bye-bye.